try to see if I can hold my composure and not act a fool while the commissioner is here. I feel like we should be appropriate in front of, you know, the leaders and not say ridiculous things. And so I'm going to do my best through this process. Commissioner Builder, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Good morning. Come on up to the mic, sir. You, you, you've done this before. You know how this works. Yeah. All right. So the meeting last night, I heard that there was shouting. I, there was screaming. People were throwing tomatoes. What was it like last night? We, we got a lot done. We absolutely did. There's uh, just two more board meetings before the election. So wow. We were checking boxes, getting things done, and yeah. it was uh, a long evening, but productive. Okay, so the one that everyone's wondering about, and I didn't even talk about it this morning yet, uh, Mills Market. Give us the summary. How did it go? Mills Market uh, passed four to one okay. on the vote. Um, Commissioner Gilroy was the one that uh, held out. Uh, but he did uh, give a lot of good reasons uh, for uh, for holding out. But it it was uh, a, a good discussion. We had a room full of citizens, and uh, I think for the most part they were in favor. And that's what we heard as as the project developed all along. Uh, you know, Mark Miller and the and, and the developer really did a nice job of responding to the pushback to the um, questions. Really, the, the whole project just changed over time, and it's been going on. When I say over time, it's been over a year. So a lot of adjustments, a lot of things that uh, citizens could get around, and um, the room was full. I think we had one citizen that spoke mildly against, still had some positive things to say about it, but uh, clearly was concerned in a couple areas, most notably traffic. Of course, and I believe the mild concern, because I was able to watch it. I love that Town of Cornelius does video stream the, the town board meetings. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. I appreciate that you guys do that to help keep the community informed sure. and give an opportunity without having to physically be there. And the mild objection, which I believe I did here, was concerned about deliveries and that type of traffic backup for the ancillary services, dumpster pickup, trash pickup, that kind of thing. And I also will say that I was it's felt different compared to previous projects and things like that. When you say there was support, there was a lot of support in that room for the project. How did how did that happen over the course of 12 months that all of a sudden, wait a second, after all the rhetoric of no development, no development, no development, now we've got people in the room that are saying we love and are excited about this project. How did that happen? Yeah, well, you know, I acknowledged last night that the property owners, the two gentlemen that brought this together, Mr. Stamey and Mr. Cashin, uh, the Cashin name, uh, you know, resonates with with folks, and and uh, Gordon brought properties together that you wouldn't think. I mean, the building was collapsing; the owner wasn't willing to move. Uh, but when you bring Gordon to the table and Mr. Stamey, uh, they got it done, brought it together, some nice parcels, and uh, you know, over time, people realized that one, they really didn't want to hang there with the blue metal buildings. They they are now getting used to the Kane Center being there in the finished look. And then you just go right next door to Potts Barbershop, something that we'll keep there as, as you know, the icon of downtown Cornelius. But then it gets pretty rough. You know, it uh, boarded up windows, uh, unsafe signs. That's not a good look for your downtown. So I think more and more people are, are uh, wanting some amenities. But still, you know, everyone, I think, still has a, con a concern about how is this traffic going to work, especially when you have performances and if you have a festival. So, you know, we're on the clock, so to speak. As a town, we've got several traffic improvement uh, projects that are lined up, and we need to get to them. And we've got, you know, we got to get started now. We've got three years, which will go by in a, in a flash. I remember when Antiquity was built, and a lot of it, the development, the plan, revolved around the light rail. Right. It kind of that was the idea. That was the grandiose vision. Hey, a kind of live, work, play environment that then if you're a commuter to the city, right, you wouldn't even have to drive, um, limit that. And, and then now the shift after the red line hasn't occurred yet. And maybe it will, maybe it won't. I don't know. That's anybody's guess. But now with downtown Cornelius really starting to amplify, you've got other projects going up. What's the, the five story building, I believe, going up right now that's fr that's framing right now. And so now you're seeing this beautiful downtown kind of come out of the ground. Culturally, what do you think the impact is of downtowns on the overall town? Well, I, you know, what's happening in Cornelius is, is, is certainly a long time in coming. When you think about Davidson, for example, uh, and people crawl through downtown Davidson. It's, it's not a 45-mile-an-hour zone. They're looking to do a similar project. But we in Cornelius always 
uh, well, I felt like, you know, people would point to Davidson and say, hey, we can crash through Cornelius as a quick cut through. You know, so, so as far as what uh, the cultural difference, having Kane down there, having people come down to Cornelius to actually stop and, and, and visit a, a retail shop or a restaurant, to me will just, you know, just, just change the whole environment. And yes, you know, it will be at times a slow crawl through downtown, but that's typically what you want. We have already completed that Gem Street extension, which uh, last count was taking 300 or so cars off of Catawba Avenue. So it is really, really important that we look at making that Gem Street alternative known, taking a look at a project that's really going to help the, uh, eliminate the backups at the DDI at exit 28. By having roundabouts, now you won't have that traffic backing up down Catawba Avenue waiting to cross the bridge. They'll, they'll keep moving, a little securitous uh, route around there, uh, but they'll still move. And, and, and that's what I mean by we should have traffic flow and not traffic congestion. And people get upset when they're just sitting there on Catawba, Catawba and they don't know why. And uh, our deputy manager last night gave one example, a paint truck. Yeah, I heard. You know, double parked in the road, just cars backing up behind them. That, that just can't happen. There's some simple things that we can do locally, but we have to continue to look at other avenues. And to your point, uh, mass transit. I'm, I'm not uh, holding out hope on the red line. But hey, if Charlotte wants to spend another five mil, you know, hey, let him spend the money, right? I guess it doesn't it, matter to me. It feels a little bit like a bribe. You know, they, doesn't they, it, though? they do want that sales tax money and they need us to sign on. So they, they want to play nice. Uh, but until, you know, Norfolk Southern, some of their uh, officials get to the table and put something in writing, I'm, I'm thinking that we should do more ride share. There's probably that bus rapid transit that might be there be long before the red line. But no question, I think also in downtown Cornelius, it's going to evolve. When you think about people that will move into Mills Market and see what's around them, be able to walk to the grocery store, there would be nice restaurants, entertainment, a park in Greenway, uh, OMB eventually on the hill. I, I well, think and Atrium's got the urgent care right there too, right? You've got literally everything every, you could possibly need. Everything you need. And I, th I think these days more folks are working from home. Uh, you know, you've got that option. Uh, you also have some affordable housing opportunities, and then we also give a stipend to our first responders. So pretty neat that the fire station, police station is right next door. So hopefully that'll be uh, a, an avenue for someone to live right there, walk to work, and, and not put cars on the road. And, and it's the transportation, and you've got a transportation background. So, and I heard you talking about that yesterday on, on the on during the the meeting. What is it? CRPTO. What? It, well, give me all these acronyms I hear all the time. CRTPO, the Charlotte Regional Transportation Planning Organization. Yeah, it's a mouthful. They, <laughs> they have more acronyms than that. I, I have a whole directory. Uh, but but that you know that's that's where I really started to uh, find, and I've been on that uh, for about a year and a half now. That was my assignment this term as well as the local transportation advisory board. And it, when I look at the two, I see that CRTPO, big government, moving at their speed, you know, speed of government. And what I've been really pushing with our transportation advisory board is use some of our excess funds to do local projects, things that we can get done without NCDOT so we don't have to wait. Right now we're focused on solving Bailey Road. You know, that just, that's a sore thumb. That just sticks out with two schools, a park, and uh, the need to also do some development, but we need to get the infrastructure right. So uh, my background over the last year and a half, my focus has been uh, worrying about the commuter uh, or even someone who's trying to get across town is just sitting there saying, why don't those people over there fix this? And some of it's quite simple, you know, whether it's a right turn lane or a stacking lane added. Uh, we're going to work on those. Okay, can you we're stick them with you? Uh, might as well. Let's get to know Commissioner Bill Adu a little bit here. Did I ask you for a favorite restaurant in Cornelius? Have I asked you that already? I don't think you have. Okay, favorite restaurant in Cornelius, go. See, that's, that's you know, during campaign season. This is a, a dirty that, trick. I know, it's question. a dirty trick. But here's, here's how I respond to that. I do uh, routinely uh, just go from restaurant to restaurant in town. But I'll give a shout out again. I did one yesterday for Pita Pit. Ah, a little so, Pita Pit action. Pita what are you, Pit. a 2 a.m. or at Pita Pit after a night out on the town? Is no, that you? No, no. Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm more of a lunch. Uh, you know, it's like Cheers. I walk in and Todd knows. <laughs> so you've got the buffalo chicken wrap. Uh, there you, you know, go. Chips and a drink. And I, I've been doing that. Uh, my office was just down the street from there. Okay, cool. Uh, but, you know, he's, he's a hardworking small business owner. And uh, uh, I really enjoy 
stopping by, you know, chatting with uh, some of the fellow customers. A little pita pit action. Maybe yeah. I'll try that today for lunch. You, uh, I owe you congratulations. Everyone does. You are a, a grandfather again today. That's right. Pop pop. Uh, Can, pop pop. Okay. Yeah, okay. Can you give us any details? Well, um, we are going to have a session this afternoon. My son-in-law, we're going to get the uh, coaching team together, and we're going to s- just check out the offensive side of the ball oh, for gosh. him. <laughs> uh, but, no, he's uh, 8 pounds, 11 ounces, so, you know, pretty good size. I, I, I know we'll have to work him out quite a bit. Uh, still looking for the middle name. His first name is Lane. Lane. L-A-N-E. Lane. I'm thinking either Justin or Bill for the middle name. <laughs> well, hey, I'd, uh, I could vote for a couple of those. Or or a throwback. You know, I was trying to talk my daughter into maybe, you know, like the 70s where you do these weird things. And I said, how about just a, a series of letters? You know, just like... Uh, Random string of characters. W-S-O-C or... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> S-I-C. You know. Or C-R-T-P-O. C-R-T-P-O. <laughs> that'd yeah. be pretty, or you could do like Elon Musk did, like random, like the pi symbol and upside down I or something like that, maybe, exactly. right? Yeah, no, just really excited about it. Thanks thanks for asking. Yeah, congr- I mean, that's a big deal. You know, life is a big part, right? We, we You're a commissioner, you're, you've are you you been an entrepreneur, You you but we're also all just people. And so community, and what's that made up of a group of families and individuals who want good for the community. What are a couple of things as we got about eh, 30 seconds before we rejoin back with the radio fam? What's kind of been like your vision thus far and what you want to see going forward a little bit? Well, uh, my vision, personal vision, matches what the citizens want. I think that's that's where you need to be guided if you're in an elected position. You know, there are there are a number of things that I could go a different way, but when you hear a clear direction from the citizens, you want to do what's right for the community, and and this is a great place to live. I mean, it's it's the the quality of life here in Cornelius is second to none, and um, and we're going to rejoin Radio Fan with that. One hundred point seven WSIC. Good morning, okay, and. 833, Justin Kazepis, Bill's on the Sticks, and we've got Commissioner Dennis Billadu of the town of Cornelius in studio briefing us on the board meeting last night. I was incorrect in my facts. I've got to issue an editorial correction. There were no throwing of tomatoes last night. It was a calm room. Actually, a lot of support for Mills Market, which did pass. Uh, Commissioner Gilroy was the one who voted against. Uh, Commissioner Gilroy has been a guest on the show, and I have we have we he and I are active discussions. He's going to come back on at some point. I do appreciate the variety of perspectives. Last night in particular, for the first time in a while, and I mean this regionally, um, not 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 you know honing in on just the town of Cornelius, but given like what's been going on in Huntersville, given what's going on in Davidson, what Mooresville, Troutman, Statesville, the entire Lake Norman community, just trying to decide what's the vision for the future particularly when you've got, you know, the changes that have occurred over the past few years. But last night, it was very cool to hear each of the commissioners and and leaders in the room, including, you know, town manager, deputy town manager, mayor, everybody was giving reasons of support or concerns. How much time and thought goes into when you're a commissioner, each of the individual projects? Like, can you really spend that much time thinking about every single project individually on top of everything else you guys have to do? Well, uh, you know, we don't see them all, but when we see that uh, conditional zoning, uh, for me, I, I start with a pre-development meeting that could be months ahead of time. That that's, uh, could be a year ahead of time, but basically it's the developer pitching, here's my thought, does this fit into the community? So we have several meetings, and public meetings are so important. You know, So whether we're there on site or, or the, the developer holds a meeting, I'm tuning into that to, to just get a feel for what the concern might be or the acceptance rate of the citizens. Is that right for that area? And, and I have to say, one thing that we could do a better job on, and I, I really want to work on this, is updating our our master plan. You know, uh, typically if somebody wants to know, well, what's going on in, in Cornelius? Well, I'll go to next door. I'll go to Facebook and really get the right <laughs> information. So, you know, shame on us. We, we should have, should have uh, years ago, our downtown plan published uh, a resource uh, that people could go to and say, okay, here's what the commissioners are thinking about. Here's what they heard from us, and this is how we're going to move forward. How are we going to solve the traffic issue in the downtown area? And and when you look at the comprehensive master plan, it's 11 years old, and it's still referencing exit 27 being here by 2017. 
So if only, if, if only. Uh, so we we need better direction, more more uh, sound resource that someone can go to and say, okay, let me cut through the Facebook noise. Let me just figure out what's on the commissioner's mind. What are they going to vote yes for, and what are they going to keep away from us? The transportation conversation, uh, from my perspective, my background being I'm, I'm a real estate attorney here in North Carolina, I've been a broker since 2012, grew up in this area, second generation real estate investor. Um, invest in real estate personally. I've invested locally. I've, I've gone through the rezoning process personally. Transportation coming up as a continued sticking point frustrates me because we all know the process in North Carolina. We know that you have to have a need before you get the funding. Do you think that it's time to really advocate in Raleigh for more local control or what are some of the other solutions, do you think, for transportation actually to get funding so projects can move forward? Yeah. And, you know, we would love local control more so than what we have. But I, I wouldn't shortchange ourselves. There are things that we can do within our 13 square miles, you know. So it's not, it's not the wild, wild west. We, we've got pinch points and, and uh, bottlenecks that we can work on. But, yes, we'd love to have uh, NCDOT. Uh, right there saying, yes, go ahead and do it. And and many times, uh, you know, if it's our dime, they'll go ahead and say, oh, yeah, of course. go go for it. <laughs> but right now, and we covered this last night in, in the, the pre-session, we have six projects that we've been waiting a long time for. And, it, and usually it is about the money, but these are already uh, uh, funded. We're right now looking at discretionary funds from, from CRTPO that could allow us to get these six projects moving in the 2023 2024 time frame so that's exciting you know it's always you know let's wait and see there's there's always a hurdle that's thrown before you but we are going after six projects that have been on hold for year after year after year and they are affordable from what we have from sitting on a road bond from 2018 we have 20 million left there and then we also have some excess funds in our general account that we need to look at uh, but to your question, there, you know, there's not always a need to blame NCDOT and wait for them. There are things that citizens will, will ring me up and say, well, why the heck don't you just change that? No turn on red. Uh, here's an issue that you might need another stop sign or, you know, some other way to get through that bottleneck. Well, that brings up a point that I have been wondering about and I'm curious about, and that is our traffic light system to where Mooresville now has begun the process of gaining control of the tra traffic light system. Is that something that's been of discussion for the town of Cornelius or you, you know transportation? And so what would it take? Is it feasible or do I need to let this one go? What would it take? Well, you know, so the unfortunate history, we were one of the first towns to try a new technology and you probably see those little it look like cameras at the top of each uh, on Catawba the top of the lights those were supposed to be responsive to the amount of traffic stacking up well turns out that didn't work so well so we're back on the NCDOT and I I, I, I am aware of what Mooresville's trying to do they're going to have a czar of, of uh, traffic flow uh, but it, but that gets back to my point is there are things that we can do like just simple as eliminating delivery trucks from blocking roads uh, and looking at, uh, you know, on a weekly basis and, and have a report card to say, how did we do and why did traffic back up? Is it that timing on a particular light? One, one classic example, kind of crazy, is if you know the intersection where 131 Main is and there, there was a, uh, a line that people would pull up to change the light. So you, you'd say, pull up to the white line so you, you can get yeah. your, your signal change. Well, there's no more, there's no more signal Sign. change <laughs> on that. Like, it's now uh, up on the pole and, and uh, very much new technology, but it wasn't working. And it took a citizen who was looking out his window from 131 Main offices and said, you know what, that, that light's not changing. People are sitting there for five, ten minutes, and sure enough, DOT now recognized they need to fix that uh, radar or, or detection system because it just wasn't working. But little things like that that make a big difference. You know, you, you don't want to sit there for five minutes. No, you don't. And, and that's the funny part about our town is like five minutes feels like an eternity. And you've got people moving here from places like up north, even Florida out west, that are used to commuting an hour, hour and a half each way, and traffic is nothing to them. And it's certainly a conundrum when you put all that together. But from a management perspective, given all the, the – Growth, and growth not necessarily in population yet until the doors actually are completed, and this I think goes to Commissioner Gilroy's point last night, 
the other services then for the town, in theory, if I think about it on paper, are going to have to grow as the town grows. Where do you guys stand from like a personnel perspective? Do you think within like five years we're going to have to like double the amount of employees in Cornelius? Or, or how do you see that playing out over time? Yeah, I, you know, I think there's economy of scale. You know, we safety is always first. So we always make sure that we have the right uh, first responder numbers. Uh, we are converting the fire department to a full-time uh, paid staff, uh, town employee staff. So there is adjustments that will be made, but it's not as though it's a uh, one-for-one one out of patrol then to, you know, a couple of more folks coming into town. But we will always keep pace with what we need to make sure that Cornelius has uh, as safe as you can be in today's environment. So that that is a, an expense that, that we believe taxpayers want. They, they want to see... Uh, that the town is safe. That's 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 part of the quality of life. That's the that's where it starts. But the you know the other pieces as well. We do things that maybe other towns don't do. We're picking up leaves. This is we're getting into the uh, the leaf collection uh, season. So you know we still have for our our property tax rate. And I know uh, home values have gone up with reval, but with our tax, uh, we think we deliver a, a very good value for for somebody that moves in to Cornelius, let's say versus Davidson or even Huntersville. So, um, you know, I, I think we'll continue to adjust. We'll, we'll be as, as conservative, fiscally conservative as we can be, uh, but there will be some added expense when population grows. We, um, we really have not grown as much as our neighbors, certainly to the south, Huntersville going excess of 100,000 people. We see a build out under 40,000. So we can only build so much until we start we can always go up, right? We can just keep going higher. Is that the thought, or can't can't go into the lake? So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, not not too far up either. Uh, this this Mills Market really pushed the the limit as far as what folks really wanted to see at five stories. Yeah, that's a it's a big project. The the design plans look very nice, and and I and I'm hopeful that it, it really comes down to to what the businesses are that go in on that ground floor retail, right? We can envision okay, apartments people are going to rent, but that ground floor retail, if you want to drive people to you know, patron those businesses, you've got to have some strong tenants in there, which that's a whole nother conversation. I will say Alexander Farms, and this isn't a hate. I'm not going to, I don't want to hate on Lidl. We have an Aldi. I would have rather to Trader Joe's. I will say that that's kind of one thing stuck in my mind. Like Trader Joe's at Alexander Farms would have been a phenomenal anchor tenant. Don't know if that was even ever possible. I just made that up in my mind a couple, you know, a few months ago and now I'm just saying it out loud. So besides traffic and infrastructure, because that's always going to be at the forefront, I don't think we ever truly catch up. But from a from a town perspective, what's like the next biggest thing you hear from residents? Um, other than pickleball? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, recreation, you know, so completing the, the uh, greenways, you know, we have a little bit, we're about 75, 80% there. Uh, and, and adding park space, green space. And that's in the works as well. Last night, we uh, authorized... Uh, the ability to move forward and fix Legion Field, which is, uh, you know, an in-town field that, that's that been in disrepair. We've got some drainage issues, so we're checking that box last night, moving forward. Uh, we also are one step closer to more pickleball at the Torrance Chapel. Gotta love it. It's, it's, it's taking the world by storm. I've actually never played a full game of pickleball before in my life. You're not in my demographic. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, all ages can play pickleball. Absolutely, there. absolutely. Commissioner Dennis Bilodeau been joining us, uh, Town of Corm Cornelius Commissioner. Thank you for the update and report on the uh, board hearing last night. We appreciate it. And the grandbaby. Shout and the grandbaby. Shout, shout out, out to Lane. Lane Justin. There you go. Oh, gosh. <laughs> There's more.